So in this video, I'm going to answer some of the lifelong questions of mankind. Like, what exactly is the infrared? And can you really tell the aliens by some weird ass tattoo? So infrared light is actually a wavelength of the electromagnetic spectrum. And I'm going to tell you how big that wavelength is. And to put it into perspective, here I have a meter. That's what a meter looks like. And this perspex, as you can see, is really quite transparent to the visible light. Not quite so transparent to the infrared. Now, you might think that's true of all plastics, but some plastics, which are actually really quite transparent to the visible light, are actually also quite transparent in the infrared. While other plastics, which are very thin and transparent in the visible, are actually very non-transparent in the infrared. And one of the most beautiful examples of all is the black bin liner, which, as you can see, is remarkably non-transparent in the visible, but is actually quite transparent in the infrared. Okay, fascinating. So that's what a meter looks like. Why is that relevant? So here I have two coins, a dime and a five pence piece, which are almost exactly the same size. Now the dime is interesting because it's about one millimeter thick. So there are a thousand millimeters in one meter. So that's what a ratio of a thousand looks like. One millimeter to one meter. So what would you get if you took one millimeter and went another factor of 1,000 down on the millimeter. Well, it turns out there are 1,000 microns in one millimeter. So that would get you down to the length scale of microns. So you'll recall some, some of the previous experiments that I've done with putting light through a diffraction grating that you get a blue end of the spectrum and a red end of the spectrum. So what I've got here is diffraction grating. So that's just showing you the entire solar spectrum. It's an effect very similar to looking through a prism from the ultraviolet over here which is beyond where your eyes can see through the violet through the entire spectrum to the red end which is the lower energy end of the spectrum and this is once you get off this end you're into the infrared uh, so this is basically where you feel heat and this is what gives you a suntan over here this is what burns your skin but what would be really useful is if I can actually integrate up the intensity here and for that, I'm going to need a spectrometer. So that's my little spectrometer. And it's got a fiber optic cable coming out of it here. And so that'll actually give me the spectrum of whatever I pointed at. So hopefully, if I point it at the sun, there you go, it's beautiful. You actually see what the solar spectrum looks like. So there you go, that's what the solar spectrum looks like. And that there at the red end of the spectrum is a wavelength of about one micron, which is a thousand nanometers, or one millionth of a meter. So if I zoom out to the size of a dime again, then you're at the wavelength of millimeters, microwave type radiation. In fact, the wavelength of the radiation used in your microwave ovens is about 12 centimeters, which is about the size of 12 dimes put side by side. Anyway, if we zoom back into millimeters and then microns, the entire visible spectrum is basically one micron. And your eyes are sensitive to the 0.4 to 0.8 microns bit. So it's about 1,000 times smaller than the thickness of a dime. So the entire visible spectrum goes from about 0.4 to 0.8 microns, whereas what the thermal camera is sensitive to is about one micron to 14 microns. Now, it turns out all digital cameras like this are actually black and white cameras. Even the color cameras are black and white cameras. The color cameras, they have three sensors, one red, green, blue, or, or some similar mix like that. And each one is essentially a black and white camera. And then they reconstitute them to give what you perceive to be a colored image. But they're not really. What they're doing is they're counting up all the photons in the red area, the green area, and the blue area of the spectrum. Well, what a thermal camera does is it counts up all the photons in the 1 to 14 micron range, and that converts that into an image. Now, you'll recall that when I pointed the spectrometer at the sun, you got this weird sort of bell-shaped curve, slightly lopsided, which is called a Boltzmann curve. And the shape of that curve is dependent on the temperature of the object. And this is an assumption that thermal cameras make, is that that means that you can tell by the number of photons that you're getting in the infrared region how hot an object is. And that's what all the pixels on the thermal camera are doing. They're essentially counting up photons and actually converting that into an effective temperature. 
So what you'll find is if you get something that's cold, it doesn't put out many photons in the infrared area of the spectrum and it appears cold. And if you get something that's relatively warm, it puts out quite a lot of infrared photons and it appears hot. So if I take something that is cold and put it against something that's hot, you will find that rather than actually being a signature that the aliens are among us, it's actually just a rather cool thermal tattoo.